Hey, Bastish B here for 64K, and welcome to another episode of New Retro. Welcome to 64K, hosted by Bastish B. And welcome back. So if you've never watched an episode of New Retro before, basically I look at a new game on an old system, but then we also jump back and check out the inspiration game, or the original, the game that might have inspired this new version. And today's games are... So let's first check out that inspiration game. So let's first take a look at Lunar Lander, released in 1979 by Atari in the arcades. It wasn't the original or first game in the gravity landing genre of games for lack of a better term, but it was definitely one of the most popular. The game's premise is simple, land your spacecraft on any of the landing pads without crashing or running out of fuel. It's simple yet highly addictive. Just like a lot of early arcades, it had its own unique control setup with that big chunky lever which made it catch your eye immediately when you entered an arcade. The game runs on a custom vector graphics engine that Atari made specifically for the game, which allowed it in real time to cut to a zoomed in shot as you get closer to your destination, which was revolutionary for the time. Unlike 99% of arcade games though, it doesn't have a timer, forcing you to go quick and make big mistakes. And it's all just based on how much fuel you have in your ship. Run out and you plummet to your death, unless you cheekily slap in another corner to buy more fuel. Yes, Atari invented the microtransaction. <laughs> well, sort of. A few decades later, that cheeky Double Dragon 3 used those same mechanics, but people were so offended by using real money to buy items in the shop in the game that it was dropped from certain arcade versions. Electronic Arts obviously didn't get that message. The game sold almost 5,000 arcade units, which was quite successful for the time. But Atari's other arcade game that year, which used the Lunar Lander engine, Asteroids, became the runaway hit, and ended up kind of eclipsing a bit of Lunar Lander's legacy. If you want to try out the game on modern systems, check out the Atari Flashback Classics Volume 1 on the PS4 and Xbox One. And before we check out today's new game, let's take a brief look at the C64's most memorable early take on the gravity genre, which was called Jupiter Lander, released in 1982 on the C64 and VIC-20, released by Commodore themselves, and programmed by Hal Laboratory. This, like most early C64 games, was what you would call a clone game. Basically copying an arcade game, slightly changing the name to cash in on its success and receive easy money for minimal effort. Check out the C64 games publisher Anarog for more examples. The game however is still pretty good and challenging to play. Try to land on any of the pads, each one being slightly more perilous than the other and don't run out of fuel. If you land successfully, you get refueled for the next attempt. This, like the next game we're going to look at, is ultimately, in my opinion, better played with a keyboard than a joystick. The precision is way more accurate, and the game is all about that, so make sure you try out that option first. Overall, it was one of those early Commodore games that I played the heck out of, and it's fun even though it's pretty limited in scope, but still delivers a pretty unique gameplay experience. And now let's check out the new retro game. In late 2020, we got Neptune Lander Elite on the Commodore 64 by C64 Mark. This is essentially another clone game, but it goes way more than that by taking the basic gameplay and adding lots of fun addictiveness to the overall experience. Number one is definitely music. I love a game with a good thumping soundtrack. A C64 game especially just feels kind of weird without one, and this game has some rocking tracks. All the basic tropes are in place though. Choose where to land out of three options. If successful however, you move on to the next level with 40 uniquely designed stages in total to try out and beat. I really like all the fun little additions like the laser guns, massive moving doors, those dodgy EMP traps and various others that make this much more challenging than the previous games. The stages themselves are also 
designed extremely well and are not merely randomly generated, like the original Lunar Lander. Difficulty settings are also available if you find it a bit hard, and the Cracking Group Access has a nice train version if you really bad at it. The best part though is that the game is free or pay what you want, so why not give them a couple of bucks for this cool little game. It is however only PAL compatible in case you're thinking of playing it on original hardware, so just bear that in mind. The excellent graphics, the really nice variety to the stages, optional music or sound effects in-game, great controls which again I'd highly recommend keyboard over controller for this game for the best experience and this all amounts to another excellent clone game which goes beyond the original and is one of the most fun recent C64 games I've played. Check it out. And you're probably wondering where can I get these games? As for the original Lunar Lander Arcade, like I said earlier, check out the Atari Flashback Classics Volume 1 on Xbox One and PS4. As for Jupiter Lander, your best bet is getting a copy off eBay in its original physical form. And as for Neptune Lander Elite, I'll leave a link in the description. You can pay what you want or download it for free. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.